Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good morning, brilliant humans, and welcome back to Amsterdam. We are here at day three of KubeCon, if you can't tell from my voice, but it is a fabulous time. This is the largest open source conference in Europe. I'm joined by my co-host Rob, I'm Savannah Peterson, and we've got Tom Squared over here on my left. Very pumped for this panel. We're fans of you. I'm wearing the cast in colors today. All right, yeah. So grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Always looking out for it. Always looking out. How you guys doing? How you holding Very up? Very good, yeah. Great conference so far. I think my voice is gone as well, so I apologize, but great energy, good conference. It's, it sounds good to me, so I wouldn't know any different. <laughs> yeah. As we always tell people, the audience doesn't know what they don't know, Perfect. so your your yeah. your secret safe with us. Tom, you guys threw a great party last night. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling better than last time we spoke, because then I did not have a voice and I was screaming, So, but that has nothing to do with <laughs> this show because it's been amazing. It's been super busy, tons of people, tons of conversations. Oh yeah. With partners activities, uh, our party was amazing yesterday. It uh, was. You went right uh, yeah. upside down museum. That was that was really really That's fun. Cool. We had a great uh, learning day with Cube Campus uh, as well. Uh, boot traffic was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, was... I want to talk about that real quick, Tom. You had quite the line. What was your activation yesterday? Well, we were um, honored to be um, well to, to have a guest speaker. Let's say uh, Kelsey Hightower was in the booth, and um, he gave a very good. Uh, well, it wasn't a presentation; it was an interview actually with Tom. So uh, oh, it was great. it was really good conversation with uh, questions from the audience. So people loved that that they got to ask their question to uh, Kelsey uh, on a stage. Uh, and then afterwards, he was signing books, and people loved that experience. So that was one of our uh, highlights of the show. It's very community forward decision for you to make mm -hmm. too, which is awesome. And I know that you're passionate about community, Tom. What does this open source community mean to you and to Kasten? Oh my gosh, so much. I mean, Kasten really grew up in this community, right? We, we founded it in 2017. Kubernetes was still pretty new, especially on the stateful side, um, but. Yes. Yeah, it was, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's an understatement, I know. So a lot of stuff we had to do, kind of, you know, we were forging ahead, forging a path. Um, but it's been really great to see the community really adopt Kubernetes for everything across the board, including for stateful applications. Do you feel, we, we, this has been a theme on the show this week, and I personally can kind of sense it, I feel like we're at a real new stage of maturity within the ecosystem. Every time we come to the KubeCon, there's, it's more people are in bigger deployments, bigger scale in production, it's really good to see, yeah. yeah. I, I think what, what has been interesting in a lot of the talk around this one has been the move from uh, being DevOps and SREs, more to a platform engineering, more an organized way for day two. And I think to the maturity aspect that Savannah was talking about, that seems to lead to more stateful apps coming over. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree. Um, we're seeing the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's been bigger apps. I mean, some of the discussions at the bars at night with some of the attendees. You've been going to bars at night? I, I may People have, are doing I that may in have Amsterdam? I may have gone to one, or maybe two, uh, parties <laughs> or what have you. Uh, and then you Who's see- counting? Yeah, and then you see that, like, there was a VP of development, he was talking about how do I, now I'm already carving up VMs into microservices, how do I take that next step? How do I get to a platform? And I think that's been interesting. And, and, and it's definitely gone beyond the early adopters is what I'm seeing. If you look at the, yes. kind, of, the, the kind of companies yes. that you're talking to uh, and, and, and the profiles that, that are visiting the booth, it, it's really, it's a much wider adoption. It's no longer just like the, the highest intelligent people who are doing the cutting edge. It, it, I'm not talking about, I mean, I don't want to be uh, denigrating about those people, but it, it's really yeah. a wider, uh, audience that we're seeing and, and um, for, versus before, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about with the maturity. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm not quite as OG as you guys, but I started working in Kubernetes in 2020 and, and it was still kind of this thing, maybe we're going to try or maybe we'll make the investment. The complexity was a real barrier. People weren't, you know, there's kind of a lot of ad hoc hybrid solutions that were going on. Now it feels like this is just the assumed platform mm -hmm. that, you know, this is this assumed tool that you're going to be using, which I think is pretty, pretty awesome. You touch a lot of different customers. You're the number one backup for Kubernetes. Tom, talk to me about some of the trends that you're seeing across customers. Yeah, so I, I think what I've Tell seen is... Tell us the secrets. <laughs> yeah. You know, for, from our side, like we see 
with scale comes complexity and things, so our focus is really to make sure we simplify a lot. Um, you know, tech has been pretty inaccessible in general for a lot of people. I think what's great about this is that there's a lot of community to support people getting into it and then transition to more and more uh, larger scales, right? Um, for us, I think we focus a lot on how do we really simplify this, this complex complexity down. Uh, if you notice Number one complaint in this space. Oh my yeah. gosh, there's so many projects in this space. Mm -hmm. There's so many vendors and things. It's really overwhelming for a lot of people. I think you know, that, that's part of coming with such a big community. Um, but for us, when we go to different environments, you know, really making sure that we're able to support different customers is kind of our biggest challenge, I would say, right now um, on that side. How do you approach that challenge? You probably have a very diverse customer list. Yeah, we have to How do you this. keep everyone happy? Oh my gosh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a full-time job, let me tell you. But we, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. We have an open source project that helps you validate your storage in your environment, right? It's very easy to set up things in the incorrect way. Um, so we have this project called Cubeser, which lets you do things like validate so uh, sn snapshots, lets you do things like take performance metrics from your system. Um, and it's actually, you know, it's an open source project, anyone can use it, contribute to it, but it's been very helpful for our sales teams even who go to customer environments because the number one issue they face initially is, oh, I have this storage, you know, but maybe it's inconfigured incorrectly. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and I think contributing back because I think the bringing the open source that you have been uh, for you know over over the course of the company's existence even you know before veeam and all of that I think it's been that's that's how it's really I think been embraced I think different from where openstack was and openstack was like like 99 percent vendors and there was not a lot of community and I think we saw even here there's 25 percent of the contributors now are from end users, which I think is good to see that building. But I think to your point, it comes with complexity of where do I work, how do I get involved? Are, are you seeing that your, are your customers looking for you to solve the problems, or are they actually actively coming to you and saying, how do I get involved in some of this? You know, it's a good question. We, I think part of our initial, uh, our initial kind of benefit was that we were somewhat the experts in the space. So we get questions that were unrelated to storage, yeah. you know, just how do I even set up deploy Kubernetes? Um, and so, so part of our strategy has actually been supporting the community in that. You know, we have, we have Campus, which is an education platform. Um, and I think part of that is, uh, you know, we're really trying to support customers in any way they see fit. I would say that we also have a great partnership with many different companies, and you know, we try to bring in the best of breed for whatever situation we need. You mentioned Cube Campus, and you know, Tom, that I'm a big fan. You are. What's going on with Cube Campus? How many students have you educated? Tell the audience a little bit about that program. So it's been growing massively. You know that we launched uh, it as a new brand at the previous KubeCon, uh, and the uh, the numbers of new learners has been going up very steadily uh, at that point. Uh, I think we were close to. No, we were just over 10,000 at that point, and, and it doubled in six months, essentially. Wow. I just got goosebumps uh, when you said that. I remember when we chatted about it on the show last time, and I, it's, it, it, a lot of people love to talk about community or pretend that it matters to their business, but you're actually taking a lot of steps as one of the big players in this game to educate that next generation and to get people onboarded. Yeah, and, and, and I think not just Cube Campus. I think what's nice or what's great about um, Casting by Veeam is like our open source involvement, we're, we're taking as much as we're giving, uh, or we might actually be giving even more than, than what we're taking, especially with Cube Campus. Uh, it's, it's not just leveraging what's out there, but we also have a team that's contributing to these projects yeah. and, and, and uh, give back to the community. And with Cube Campus, what we're really trying to do, I mean, it's a, it's a free platform to learn Kubernetes, uh, and we're really trying to help the, uh, the community and this ecosystem to grow faster, uh, because it's complex technology to learn. Yeah, how, how did you, as a team, because you just started when we chatted last time, how do you prioritize what you're going to invest in in terms of community effort and, and dispatching people to work on these various projects? You know, we have we have so many fronts that we have to work with. I mean, there's there's Cube Campus. We have dedicated open source projects that we've released that we think are helpful, but also contributing right back to the projects that exist already, especially Kubernetes. I mean, you know, we're we're definitely cutting edge right now on the the backup and protection side. And um, I'll give you an example. Right now, we're working on a change block tracking, which really helps you do backups when right. you're at scale. And it's a pretty hard thing to put into Kubernetes specifically because you want to generalize it so you can use any storage vendor, right? You know, the current approach we take is actually we have direct integrations with storage providers that, uh, that will provide change block tracking, but we're really trying to get that into the community so it's not just specific vendors that are able to do this. Yep, making it accessible for all. It's one of the things <laughs> I love about y'all. One of the 
all like conversations. I'm curious to get your hot take since we're talking about community. Do you think that this big community is is ready for where we're going with AI? Do you think we're going to help steer that conversation? Or at least safeguard some of the chaos that could potentially happen? You know, AI is going to disrupt everything. I mean, every industry is going to be going to feel the impact from it. Um, you know, what my, my team in, on the engineering side, uh, I think there's a lot of questions around how development will happen in the future. I mean, it's, you can get so much leverage out of it. At the same time, you have to be very careful because there's many implications of uh, not knowing where the code comes from that you have to be very, very careful about. And so I think uh, at larger scales, you'll, be, you'll, see a lot, um, you'll see a lot of kind of hesitancy to get into it uh, to start with. But I think pretty quickly, there'll be a lot of companies and vendors that will figure out you know, how to tell you where this code came from for things like licensing and compliance that are honestly essential for, uh, for developing secure software. Because you see a lot of other co companies here even really focusing on that from the security side. So things like S-bombs are really important. And it's, it's just much, talked about that in the panel yeah, just before this. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. And it's so hard to do that if you don't know where the code came from, right? Right. Yeah, Tom, I, what do you think? Uh, well, AI is entering the marketing space as well. I see a lot of people creating content yeah. with uh, AI. And uh, first few times I tried it or when I saw results from that, I was like, oh my gosh, the job of product marketing is no longer safe. But then when you start getting uh, looking into the details and, and you, you, you quickly see that, okay, this is not unique content, this, these are, no. this is very generic. Um, I, I was it's asking questions. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, yeah. was, I, I was asking questions about who's the number one backup, of course, and, and then. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're over there training chat GPT. True marketer, Tom, true fucking marketer. No, but it, 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 it was just funny how generic it stayed, and then only by um, asking more specific questions, the follow-up questions, it was getting better. I was like, okay, did I now help them? And then a few yep. days later, I tried it again, and it was from scratch, so it wasn't wow. learning that fast. No, <laughs> it was just humoring you while you were playing with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's great, I, I love that. You know, we should all be training the AI to help promote us, we need to be doing that on theCUBE. We've actually got a cool new feature, we're, it's not out yet, but we've got some exciting stuff going on on that side. We're very much just at the surface, though, to your, to your point. Yeah. And I mean, it's so generic, it's washed out, it's a little bit, every time, I, I can very much tell when something's written by chat GPT, because it has no soul. It's, it's, it's just kind of this bland, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's not a lot of life. ChatGPT is not about to mimic me anytime soon. Let's at least let's put it that way. From the marketing point of view, the most interesting thing is we have to figure out how to um, see it as a new SEO. Yeah. That, that's essentially, so how are we exactly. going to be feeding it? Exactly. We totally yes. agree on this. Yeah. I was just talking about this the other day. <laughs> well said, Tom. Love having you on the show. That's why we love. That's why we love having you. Okay, so one of the things that I love about you guys, and you always make our swag segment because you take it seriously. Because obviously, you care about your community. You you select swag with intent. You've got your lovely matching vests. You've got a Herschel backpack over there. How how do you decide what swag you bring to the shows? I guess that's my question. That's yours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the biggest priority for me is that it needs to be durable. Uh, I don't like yes. the swag like the toys that will not be used a day after the show. Like, let me take five more for my kids and then the kids don't care about it. So, uh, yeah, the backpacks need to be good quality. Uh, we had, like, uh, luggage labels, for example, very useful for people. Get it's your actually brand on out my there. suitcase now. Um, yeah. We did the, the, the chopstick stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs those. That doesn't get thrown away. So durable is really what's key. Durable and people need to be using it, not just the stuff that they're put somewhere and never use again. Right, and sit on your desk and, and exactly. never get touched. You guys are very much on the pulse, and we love having you on the show. What are we going to be talking about when we're in Chicago in six months, Tom? Oh my gosh, great question. I think the trend will continue with people getting more in production, more at larger scales. Um, it's a good question, you know. Like, what's interesting for me too is seeing the difference in the markets a little bit. Like, U.S. has a, a different trend. And, totally. Yeah. yeah. Go build on that a little bit. What, what, what's yeah. different in Europe versus uh, NA? I, I see a lot of really strong, kind of smaller, bespoke partners in Europe, mm -hmm. and it's great. We work with many of them, and it's really good to see that kind of go to market. It's, it's, you know, uh, I think there's bigger partners certainly in the U.S., and so you can definitely get more leverage out of that. But in some some cases, it might be a little more fun to work with the small partners too here, here in Europe. It feels really collaborative here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely noticed that. What are you going to be telling me in six months? We might be talking about a cold weather because Chicago yeah. and November is going to be interesting. <laughs> I know. We'll be in our, I'm going to need a. I'm going to need a vest for that yeah. show. Yeah. That's that's going to be. Yeah, we know uh, our swag for that one. Yeah. yeah. I hope I'll be telling you that we doubled the Cube Campus uh, Learners Database again in six months. But let's see if we can keep that trend. I love that. I'm rooting for you. You know, I'm number one fan on that side. 
Tom and Tom, thank you so much for being here with oh, us. Thank you for having us. We, yeah. we love having you on the show. Great insights, well summarized. Just just a joy. And thanks for the great swag every show and the great parties. Y'all are just fan favorites. There's one way to bribe the host. Keep, <laughs> keep us drunk and give us nice treats. Rob, thank you so much for joining me. Wow, that was a classy yeah. line, folks. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you all for tuning in live to our KubeCon EU coverage here in beautiful Amsterdam. My name is Savannah Peterson, and you are watching The Cube, the leading source for emerging tech news.